The majority of NASCAR teams have signed a new charter agreement. The majority. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. After nearly two years of negotiations, white smoke finally came out of NASCAR headquarters as NASCAR and teams came to an agreement on charters going for a seven-year deal that starts in 2025 and with an option for a seven-year deal after that. I mean, NASCAR remains undefeated since 1948 when it comes to getting their way, and essentially that's what happened here as the majority of NASCAR teams did sign this new charter agreement. Now, I say the majority because, well, we have two holdouts, 2311 Racing and Front Row Motors sports did not sign the new charter agreement. So according to Jeff Gluck from The Athletic, as well as Bob Pockers at Fox Sports and Jenna Fryer from the AP, NASCAR set a self-imposed deadline of midnight on Friday for teams to agree to a new charter or have their charters revoked. And ultimately, all the teams signed the new agreement, and we have a charter agreement in place, minus the signatures of 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports. What happens with their charters remains to be seen. Both teams are expected to add a third charter next year, 2311 Racing, moving up to three cars. FRM has already announced that they've acquired this third charter for Zane Smith, probably, maybe, at this point. What goes on with their charters? Uh, we'll have to wait and see here. But of course, you knew when a charter agreement came out and you heard that not everybody signed that 2311 Racing was going to be one of those names because Denny Hamlin has been steadfast that they are not signing this new charter agreement. They are not close on it. And I get what he's saying, but it ultimately comes down to the stubborn guy in any negotiation where like, I'm going to get the best deal. And it's like, buddy, take what's put out in front of you, because if you don't take this, you're not getting anything after that. And I kind of got this feeling on Wednesday at NASCAR playoff media day when Denny was the loudest person in the room, once again, talking about negotiations and charters and the agreement and everything that goes into that, that being the loudest person in the room generally means that you're on the back foot here. And it felt like everybody else had was pretty resigned to the fact that the charter agreement was very, very close. But Denny was very much steadfast and locked in, knee deep in the sand that we are not budging on this. We're going forward. All the other owners are texting me, telling me this. And maybe they were. And maybe these owners got scared. Maybe they they bought the threat from NASCAR and they were like, we got to sign it. We can't afford to lose our charters. I mean, a call racing, a, a, a track house, you know, a legacy motor club, somebody like that, RCR, they can't afford to have their charters taken away from them. Uh, Rick Hendrick or Roger Penske, they can. That's not going to put them out of business. They're going to be like, okay, well, uh, we'll see what the future holds now going forward. 2311 Racing, uh, they are in an advantageous spot of having wealthy investors, but losing their charters, would be very detrimental, uh, an action very detrimental to their uh, future there. Not the quote, uh, Denny Hamlin, uh, his podcast rather. So it is interesting that they didn't sign. According to The Athletic, teams will be getting a sizable bump in revenue. They will be making more money. And currently the TV revenue split is 65 goes to the track, 25 to the teams, 10 goes to NASCAR. Teams were pretty adamant that they wanted more money. They wanted a bigger chunk of what the tracks got because they don't believe that tracks are reinvesting the money that they're getting back into the facilities. And I would argue that there's certainly some tracks out there that were not reinvesting. We're definitely pocketing some money. Meanwhile, teams are like, hey, give us a bigger cut so we don't have to rely so much on sponsorship. And, and, and that will help cut costs on, on our end. And they're like, we really can't cut more costs here. So now we end up in the position that we're in where the majority of teams have signed and maybe they were threatened, maybe they weren't, but this whole process has been about NASCAR wanting to assert their own pressure and dominance in this negotiation period. If you remember back, it was initially the RTA. It was all of the chartered teams got together and they're like, we're going to negotiate as one. All the teams are walking together. And NASCAR and Jim France said, we have no interest in negotiating with you as a whole. We will negotiate with you on a team by team basis, which is just some good old fashioned union busting. And I'm not here to say that that's a bad approach. I'm not here to say that's the right approach. I'm just telling you what it is. I, ultimately, what happened here is we had two sides that were working against one another and the fans get stuck in the middle, which is the unfortunate part. But 2311 Racing remains not signed and they released a statement that said, quote, 2311 decided not to meet a NASCAR imposed deadline last night to sign charter agreements for its two cars for 2025 through 2031. 2311's position, as stated in a letter to NASCAR, is that we did not have an opportunity to fairly bargain for a new charter 
charter contract. We notify NASCAR what issues need to be addressed in writing at the deadline. We are interested in engaging in constructive discussions with NASCAR to address these issues and move forward in a way that comes to a fair resolution while strengthening the sport we all love. At 2311 Racing, we remain committed to competing at the highest level while also standing firm in our belief that NASCAR should be governed by fair and equitable practices. Ultimately, what Denny Hamlin and 2311 Racing wanted, and I think ultimately what the team owners wanted as well, is a genuine franchise model. In a utopian world, they want what the NFL has, which is 32 teams, which all have equity in the league. They work with the commissioner for the betterment of the game so that they all can make more money and they all can have more valuable franchises. That's ultimately what teams wanted with these charter agreements. What they were never going to get was exactly that. Because as long as the France family is in control, they're not giving up the equity that they have in the sport. They're not giving away money from this. And so what Denny Hamlin ultimately wants is just not going to, to happen here. And there's certainly other things mixed in there that they want over at 2311 Racing. But the big thing is permanent charters. And NASCAR was never willing to give that to them. Um, one, because they were like, well, we don't know what the next media rights deal is going to be. What happens if we get less money? Well, Ultimately, if you get less money, then teams just get less of like less money there. If they've agreed to, you know, over the if we just lay it out, we're like, hey, these are now permanent charters. You're always guaranteed to 45 percent of TV money. OK, great. If we sign a billion dollar deal, that's fantastic for us. If we sign a 700 million dollar deal, that's not as fantastic for us. So that's kind of like what the NBA has. I mean, and the NFL where teams have a revenue split and they're like, well, you know, we don't know if the next TV revenue is going to be as much, but we still have permanent franchises. And that's ultimately what teams wanted out of this. Teams also wanted a seat at the table when it came to costly rule changes. They wanted to say about the future of the sport, um, a seat at the table for that as well. They wanted to cut a future revenue uh, wherever that came from. You know, like obviously when gambling and daily, you know, fantasy got introduced, that became profitable and NASCAR teams wanted money out of that. Whatever that next version is, they wanted that. And NASCAR to their credit was like, well, we don't know how to give you a cut of something we don't know is coming yet. So that was a you know a bit of a hang up. Um, I also had the topic of the uh, no disparaging remarks, which Curtis Polk brought to everybody's attention last week at Darlington, which was included in one of the most recent proposals sent over by NASCAR, where essentially you can't say anything negative about NASCAR. Teams wanted that taken out. The France family owning a charter was another holdup that, you know, was an issue a few months ago. So there were a bunch of little issues that teams wanted sorted out. And what it sounds like happened here is they didn't get much of what they were asking for outside of the money. And the money is certainly important. Don't get me wrong. The teams definitely wanted to get more money. That was the biggest thing going into this. Permanent charters, more money. Well, they got a seven-year deal plus a seven-year option after that. So we'll just say they got 14-year deal worth of charters here. Okay, that's a long time. That's equity. You can get people, investors to buy in. Over the course of 14 years, there's a lot that can happen in that time frame. Getting more money, also a win. All these other little things, I'm going to guess they got some of them. Obviously, we don't know yet because none of this information has come out, uh, but maybe they didn't get some other parts of it. So for now, majority of teams have signed a charter agreement, which means that everybody will be in Daytona. Everybody will be in Bowman Gray for the clash. I said from the beginning that this was going to get done eventually. I didn't think that we would get a self or we would get an imposed deadline of Friday at midnight, basically forcing teams to sign. Uh, I don't really like that i understand it uh, just because i understand it doesn't mean i necessarily like that tactic but teams were never going to get everything they were asking for and i think nascar finally just got tired of it which is why that anti-disparaging remark thing you know or disparaging remark thing rather uh was included where they're like we're tired of you guys talking about this let's just get this deal done and then we can all you know go back to sort of how business was here so let me know what you think about the charter negotiations like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram twitter and facebook at break hard blog